Hello, you're watching the news from Bahrain International with Samar Ajawi. The delegation of the Parliamentary Division, headed by the Speaker of the Council of Representatives and head of the Parliamentary Division Executive Committee, Ahmed bin Salman Al Salam, concluded its participation in the work of the Parliamentary Conference on Interfaith Dialogue, working together for our common future held in the city of Marrakesh in Morocco. The conference discussions focused on two main themes, the rule of law and peace and inclusiveness. The members of the delegation focused their presentations, highlighting the efforts of the Kingdom of Bahrain under the leadership of His Majesty the King and supported by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, in spreading the culture of peace by adopting and supporting all international initiatives that perpetuate interfaith dialogue. The Kingdom stated that the Bahraini model embodies the principles called for by the conference, including the protection of religious freedoms by law. The committee members also emphasized that the legislative authority in the Kingdom of Bahrain attaches great importance to supporting and promoting a culture of coexistence through the continuous modernization of the legislative system that preserves freedoms. The conference concluded with a consensus of the participants on the need to strengthen the partnership between religious leaders and legislative institutions to protect religious, cultural and ethnic diversity and support the values of peace, coexistence and human brotherhood. It was also stressed the need to continue constructive cooperation between national legislative institutions and the religious leaders in order to consolidate the values of openness and tolerance and reject intolerance and extremism in all its forms to create solidarity-based national societies based on coexistence, moderation and mutual respect. And the Speaker of the Representatives Council, Ahmed bin Salman Al Salam, hailed Bahrain's success in retaining the Tier 1 status for the sixth consecutive year in the United States Department of State's 2023 Trafficking in Persons Report, which is the highest annual international classification in this field. In a statement, the Speaker said, The global confidence recognizes Bahrain's humanitarian and legal credentials and landmark strides in combating trafficking in persons. He extended congratulations to His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. Al Salam commended the concerted efforts undertaken by the Ministries of Interior, Foreign Affairs, Justice, Islamic Affairs and Endowment, Social Development, Information, as well as the Supreme Judicial Council, the Labour Market Regulatory Authority, the National Committee for Combating Trafficking in Persons and Civil Society Institutions. He attributed the achievement to unified national efforts in which everyone contributed through outstanding performance, the preservation of labor rights for all the parties, and the consolidation of the Kingdom of Bahrain's global position as a leading model for combating the crime of trafficking in persons. The Shura Council Chairman Ali bin Saleh al Saleh hailed Bahrain's success in achieving the Tier 1 status for the sixth consecutive year in the United States Department of State's 2023 Trafficking in Persons Report which is the highest annual international classification in this field. In a statement, as Saleh said that the global achievement eliminated from the directives of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, hailing Bahrain's strides, which reflect its strong constitutional, legislative and judicial credentials. The Shura Chairman extended congratulations to His Majesty the King and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. He commended the efforts made by the Minister of Interior General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa to to reinforce the law and support the drive to combat human trafficking and protect the public morals. The Shura Council Chairman also lauded the role of the Minister of Labor, the Labor Market Regulatory Authority Chairman Jamil bin Muhammad Ali Hamidan to implement the measures on combating trafficking in persons. He also commended the role of the National Committee to Combat Trafficking in Persons in coordination with the Ministries of Interior, Justice, Foreign Affairs, Social Development, Information, the Labor Market Regulatory Authority, as well as the cooperation with the Judiciary and Civil Society. The Minister of Foreign Affairs and Chairman of the National Human Rights Committee, Dr. Abdel Latif bin Rashid Azayani, praised the Kingdom's success in strengthening its leadership in the field of protection and promotion of human rights and the consolidating of its prestigious international human rights position within the Tier 1 status for the sixth consecutive year in the U.S. Department of State's 2023 Trafficking in Persons Report. On the occasion, the Foreign Affairs Minister extended sincere congratulations to His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and to the Crown Prince and Prime Minister His Royal Highness, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. 
Dr. Azayani hailed the ongoing cooperation among the legislative, executive, and judicial branches, praising their coordination with human rights institutions and the civil society in promoting and protecting human rights and dignity. He also paid tribute to the Interior Minister, General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, for his efforts in the field of law enforcement. He also appreciated the efforts of the Labor Minister and the Board of Directors Chairman of the Labor Market Regulatory Authority, Jabil bin Mohammed Ali Humaydan, to provide a safe and fair environment in the labor market. The Foreign Minister also expressed thanks and appreciation to the National Committee for Combating Trafficking in Persons for its role in enhancing coordination among the Ministries of Interior, Justice, Islamic Affairs and Endowment, Foreign Affairs, Social Development and Information, in addition to the LMRA. The Foreign Affairs Minister expressed pride in the fruitful cooperation between Bahrain and the United States in the human rights, political and development fields. The Minister of Labor and Chairman of the Labor Market Regulatory Authority, Jamil Humaydan, praised Bahrain's sustainable efforts in human rights and combating trafficking in persons by achieving the Tier 1 status for the sixth consecutive year and the U.S. Department of State's Trafficking in Persons report. The Minister congratulated His Majesty the King and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, affirming that the achievement is thanks to the Royal Directives to attach considerable importance to human rights and peaceful coexistence. Hamidan praised the efforts made by all government agencies and institutions that work diligently in an integrated institutional work system which reflects the civilized image of Bahrain's systems, legislation and work ethics. He commended the supervision of the Minister of the Interior and his follow-up on the Ministry's efforts in providing protection and security and supporting efforts to combat trafficking in persons. He also praised the efforts of the Minister of Foreign Affairs in following up on the human rights in Bahrain and the Kingdom's embassies. Hamidan thanked the role and efforts of the Ministry of Justice and Islamic Affairs and Endowment, the Public Prosecution, the LMRA, the Ministry of Labor, the National Committee to Combat Trafficking in Persons, noting that this partnership and cooperation reaffirms the success of Team Bahrain led by His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince, in sustaining achievements. The Speaker of the Arab Parliament and Chairman of the Board of Trustees of the Arab Observatory for Human Rights of the Arab Parliament, Adil bin Abdurrahman al Assumi, praised the historic achievement of the Kingdom of Bahrain by attaining the Tier 1 status for the sixth consecutive year in the U.S. State Department's 2023 Trafficking in Persons Report, which is a reflection of the Royal Vision of His Majesty the King in promoting and preserving human rights to consolidate the Kingdom's human rights position at the Arab regional and international levels. He affirmed that the Kingdom of Bahrain's attainment of this important human rights achievement is an Arab achievement that calls for pride and places the Kingdom of Bahrain at the forefront of Arab and regional countries in which human rights enjoy a distinguished position under the directives of His Majesty King Hamad, who devoted all efforts and capabilities to promote and consolidate human rights and appreciating the efforts of the esteemed government headed by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister who reflected the royal vision to enhance the status of human rights in Bahrain. al Assumi stressed the importance of the Kingdom of Bahrain and the Arab countries continuing their achievements at the Arab and international levels in preserving and promoting human rights on the basis of respect, equality and justice. Bahrain has granted the golden license for five investment projects belonging to Eagle Hills, DR, City, InfraCorp, STC Bahrain, and Wampoa Group. The combined value of these investment projects in Bahrain exceeds 1 billion and 400 million US dollars. The new projects and business expansions projects are expected to create 1,400 local job opportunities over the next three years. On the occasion, a number of senior officials in the Kingdom affirmed that granting the Golden License to a number of projects is an important step towards achieving the strategic goals of the Economic Recovery Plan, which aims to attract 2 billion and 500 million US dollars in direct investments by the end of 2023. They pointed out that the Golden License reflects Bahrain's attractive and flexible investment environment and its advanced legislative system, which contributes to making it one of the best investment destinations and enhances its competitiveness in attracting investments. This license is considered a golden ticket 
to receive a number of advantages and facilities and constitutes a model for constructive cooperation between the public and private sectors.